Thanks for tuning in. Today I'm sharing my Hermes best and worst. I know this has been a little bit long time coming because I was a little out of commission after getting some dental work done. Uh, I wanted this to be a proper sit down video where you saw my whole face um, because I felt like it was going to involve a lot of talking. So here it finally is. I have previously done my Chanel best and worst and as a quick recap in case you haven't watched that one. Um, this is a best and worst that focuses specifically on the pieces that are in my collection or have been in my collection. And I rank the top three best pieces, like things that I think are so worth it, was a really great buy. And then three that are my worst purchases. These are pieces that I could maybe live without. So I, uh, after my Chanel one, a lot of you wanted to see Hermes, Dior, Vuitton, so I wanted to work through those. And today is going to be my Hermes best and worst. For those of you who are tuning in for the first time, hi, I'm Katie. I do these luxury fashion videos here on YouTube. I like to share hauls, but I also like to do reviews where ultimately I want all of us to be able to mindfully curate our own collections. So I like to share my journey with you. If you like what you're seeing, please subscribe to my channel and like this video. Leave a comment down below with your favorite part. Um, all of that really helps me out a lot. So I am going to start off sharing my three best purchases and then move on to my three worst. They're in no particular order, uh, but things that did come up in my mind. One item I wanted to mention is in this box here. And I'm super excited that it finally started to get warm in New York City. It feels like real spring is here. So I cannot wait to bust these out again. But the first item I wanted to mention are my Oran sandals. Now I'm going to try and keep them a bit far away because they are a bit dirty. I've worn them a ton. Uh, but I did want to mention these because for me, by far and large, these are my favorite sandals to wear in the summertime. I know I recently picked up the Alohas. I think if you're, I would highly suggest that you check that video out because I go into a lot more detail. Uh, but I still feel like the Orans are a really great pair of sandals to have. And I look forward to wearing them every single spring summer season. Um, I've taken them to the beach. I've taken them on like trips. I, I pretty much wear them everywhere. I wear them in the middle of the city and in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> I wear them a ton and they go with, they're very flattering on your feet. I feel like they're very flattering even if you have narrow or wide feet. They look really good um, on, on all feet types. <laughs> Um, and for me, they're very comfortable. Now, I know comfort level when it comes to shoes is very, very individual. It really depends on your foot. Um, because I have seen reviews of some folks saying that these were so uncomfortable. So uh, I know with shoes, it's a little bit difficult, but that's also why I wanted to mention that I really, really love these shoes. I. I sort of want to get another pair. We'll see about that, but I'm super, super stoked about this pair that I do have. I absolutely love it. I feel like they're very hard wearing. I've had mine since, I want to say 2015. So I've worn them for a good five years and I've worn them, okay? It's not like I wore them once or twice in the season. Like I've worn my Orans and I feel like they look really good for their age and for how much I've worn them. Um, I haven't re reinforced the, the soles, you can see. Um, I find that they're actually really hard wearing. Usually luxury shoes will have like a leather sole, like the Gucci Princeton's will have like a really thin piece of leather. So you have to reinforce those. Otherwise you're just gonna wear right through your sole. Um, not your sole sole, the shoe sole. Uh, but um, these are really well made, I think, and they're really thick. So I didn't have a problem with those wearing through despite the amount of times I've worn these. So. I wanted to highlight my Oran sandals. The other thing I wanted to mention about these is that th they are a seasonal piece. Like, well, depending on where you live. Where I live, it's these are considered spring, summer footwear. Um, they're seasonal. I can't wear them or use them during the whole year. Despite that, they still bubble up to the top as like a good purchase. And I think that says a lot about the shoe. Item number two that I wanted to mention is actually this item right here. This is my Avalon blanket. All right. This is the specific Avalon blanket that I have. And it is the gray cream and like beige colorway. 
I'm gonna, I'll put the more exact name of this style in the description box below. I'm also gonna put it back on the sofa where it belongs. <laughs> you all have seen that blanket in the background of my videos for a solid year plus now. I think I got that in 2019 when I was in Hawaii. So it was September 2019 when I picked it up and I have loved it to death to bits ever since. I think I've mentioned it in, in a lot of other videos as well for things that are, might be great gifts ideas or things that you might wanna get. Uh, other parts of your collection that you could build out that's not, let's say, just handbags or just shoes. And I love this to bits. I absolutely love the specific colorway that I have. I'm so happy with the little bits of extra tan in there. It brings an element of warmth. Like I love, I love the gray one as well, but I'm really, like personally, I'm really happy I have the one that has the extra tan lines because I just think it's, it just, adds a little bit of warmth to it, which makes it mix so well with other pieces of like furniture and decor that I have in my home. Um, so that's something to look out for, but they do a whole bunch of colorways, really classic colorways, like there's black and white, there's, um, or there's like a black and cream. I've seen burgundy and cream, orange and cream. Then they've done some that were really interesting with a lot of blue tones in them. So every year they do come out with like seasonal colors, if that makes sense. Um, so sometimes there will be styles that are more prominent in some years over others, but the most classic Avalon blanket is just going to be your two-tone. Usually it's a color with a cream and um, that is like the most classic you can get. And ever since I got, I, I have never thought about how much money I spent on this piece, like ever. Um, it is so comfortable, it's nice and cozy and warm, um, and it looks beautiful draped over your furniture, and it's just a really nice piece to have. I, I thoroughly enjoy it. I really recommend it to anybody who might be interested. I know it's an eye-watering amount of money to spend on a blanket, but it is cashmere and wool, so it's not, they, they are like quality materials. It's excellent, it really is. It just, it makes being at home that much better. I mean, you might even think, so I'm a really warm-bodied person. I don't like when the apartment's really hot, so I don't like drape it over myself in the summertime. I will drape it a lot more in like fall, winter when I wanna be a little bit more cozy on the sofa, but I still love that it's like draped over my furniture during the warmer months of the year. I think it looks great. It's just something that you can have all year round. You can have it out and it's beautiful. I love it and I think everyone, like I think if you're interested and you, you were thinking about one, I would totally get one. I would totally advocate for it. That's number two that I really wanted to highlight, my Avalon blanket. Then thirdly, it would be this baby right here. This is my Birkin 30 in Jean Ombre. And this I was able to get, I was fortunate enough to get this in 2019. So it's been in my closet since again, September, 2019. It was that trip I made to Hawaii and I brought this little slice of sunshine back with me. There is a little part of me that feels a little obligated to have to include this in my video because it is such a standout piece. It is such a, a, a privilege to be able to have one in my collection that I, feel like it's almost rude to not include it in a best and worst video. I can do a more in-depth video, so if you guys are interested in seeing a much more in-depth video of like the comparison of my Hermes handbags, I'm more than happy to do that. Just let me know in the comments down below. Uh, but this, this little slice of sunshine, I think will always be in my collection. It is the first Hermes Birkin that I was able to get from the boutique and it is in such a gorgeous color. And like I shared in the five bags to keep forever, five bags to sacrifice tag video, uh, this just embodies a lot of accomplishments at the time. So it has a lot of sentimental value as well. But from a use perspective, um, sometimes I feel like I don't get to take it out as much as I'd like, but I'm also not going out that much in general, so it, it's not fair to the bag. <laughs> but when I do take it out, I find it extremely easy to use. And I'm not bothered at all that this is a hand carry only handbag. Usually my preference is to have a top handle and a crossbody strap 
so that I can carry it and be hands-free if I need to. So that's what I was slightly concerned about with the Birkin style because you can't really get, make yourself hands-free. Despite that, I think this is so easy to use. Usually I'll just leave it open. I won't do it fully up and I'll just carry it in my hand and it is still really easy to use, easy to access all of my things inside. And this is actually, believe it or not, one of the larger handbag sizes in my collection. I have a lot of mini bags. So when I know I want to carry a little bit more and I need that extra room, this bag is perfect for that because it's a little bit bigger. Um, so this little yellow sunshine is my top three Hermes piece from my current collection. Okay, so that concludes the best pieces in my current Hermes collection. Now moving on to the worst pieces. And because I ended off with a handbag, I'm going to start off with a handbag on this one. And the first piece I want to talk about is my Constance 24. This is in Epsom leather and Etain. The color is in Etain with silver hardware. I think again in that five bags to keep forever, five bags to sacrifice tag video, I, I mentioned this as one of the ones to sacrifice. And it doesn't mean that I'm getting rid of it right now, but um, when I compare my usage across the Birkin and the Constance, I just don't get that same sort of yummy feeling when I'm using the actual bag. So I feel like the Constance photographs beautifully. And, and this is sometimes where I struggle as an individual. There's like the human being me living my daily life. And then there's kind of the digital creator version of me where I create some additional content, whether that's on Instagram or whether that's on YouTube. And digital creator, Katie really looks for things that will photograph well. It's not that I would only pick the things that photograph well, but like I notice when things photograph well, like my Isabel Moran sweater, I noticed photographs really well. This is another item that any photo, any single, any angle, anywhere, any outfit, like this definitely stands out and I feel like it photographs really well. And of course it's true, it's a really iconic shape, silhouette, colorway, everything. But the human being, Katie, like the day-to-day, -day, the actual person <laughs> who's using the piece doesn't really get that yummy feeling compared to when I'm using my Birkin. I don't know, I don't know what it is. I don't really know why. I think it's just the floppity straps at the top just they end up getting on my nerves. They do. They really do. I wish there was an option where you could like remove them and like, I don't know, but sometimes this is just, this is just like not fun. And then, I mean, it, it is a pretty good size. So it fits like my mask case and it fits all my daily essentials. Uh, it, it, but there's just something about it that feels a little bit awkward. Um, I purchased this in, I think I want to say July last year. So when I first started using it, it was excellent to put over my shoulder. I felt like it was a good size and a, and a good shoulder drop um, for it to be close to my body. But then fall winter rolled around and I couldn't put it on my shoulder anymore when I'm wearing jackets or thicker sweaters. Like it would just like roll off my shoulder. That can happen with a lot of bags in general when you're wearing thicker things. But like at this price point, like girl, I wanna wear it like any day, any season, you know, <laughs> like I'm not, I don't want to, I don't want to just be like, oh, you know, uh, this is my, like my spring summer bag when I wear like summer dresses and light tops. Like I want to be able to carry this all day, every day. I did in the winter time, but it resulted in me just hand carrying it like this. And some of you might say, oh, why don't you like cross body it, you know, across and like on my on my frame, I don't think this sits very well as a crossbody. It kind of sits like right here. And I just, I don't find that to be particularly flattering on my body shape. And uh, like, especially in the winter time, if you're wearing sweaters or thicker layers, like forget it. Like it's gonna come like all the way up to here. I think it looks a little bit awkward for, for me um, to wear it that way, which is why I end up just carrying it like this. And then I think if I'm going to hand carry a bag, 
I'd rather hand carry my Birkin because I like that one's so easy to get in and out of. Like, sure, it's in my hand all the time, but if I need something, I just like open it up, grab what I need, and then I'm on my way. But this one, your hand's carrying, and then you're like, oh, I need something. Oh, okay, let me put it in the crook of my arm. Let me hold the bag up. Let me open the flap and then access my things. And then let me go back close the flap and then leave like five million fingerprint marks on it while I'm doing that and then put it back in my hand and then like continue walking or doing whatever. You see what I mean? Like there are so many more extra steps. So I usually carry it like this, right? So it's usually in my hand like this and then I need something. I just go straight, you see, like straight. It's open, I grab what I need, I finish paying or whatever, I put it back in there and I'm done. Like I, I, access is, is super easy compared to like the six steps I had to go through to like open this bag <laughs> and access what I needed. Um, I, I think it's just like the little things like that, that just don't, don't make this as user friendly as I thought it would be. I mean, I was thinking like this has like a strap option. It has a long strap option. Like this is perfect. It's a really nice size. It's not too small. It's not too mini, like great. And then like in actuality, like using it, sometimes I'm like struggling to, to, to make it work. Like I mentioned again, if you want a more detailed comparison of me with all of my Hermes handbags, I have this Birkin, this Constance, a Picotin 18 and a Vespa TPM. So if, you, if you'd like a much more in-depth comparison, I can do that. Just let me know in the comments down below. Um, if you have any other thoughts on the Constance, I would love to hear them as well. Like I said, I'm not necessarily parting ways with this, but if, if push came to shove, like this would be one of the contenders I sacrificed. Like this, this, would, this would be it. I feel like I probably talked way too much on, on that one Constance, but I wanted to... I just wanted to make sure I could convey why I felt like of the two, I preferred the Birkin. Cause I know I mentioned it, I kind of teased it in my tag video. Um, and this is like that follow up. So I hope all of that made sense. The second item that I think is like the worst purchase, this probably isn't a surprise because I've mentioned these before, but they're actually twillies or like little silk pieces. And I still have this little pocket square. This is a heart-shaped pocket square, which is again, adorable, but I like really don't use it. It's so cute. <laughs> it's really, really cute. It's a little heart. How adorable is that? But again, I don't really use it. And I struggle to find an appropriate application for it. And this is a little twilly that I wanted to, well, that this I believe I have for my next handbag. I will be able to put it on my next handbag. And whatever that color is, it's going to match whatever this is. I, like, I'm not saying this like I have a color in mind. I'm just saying, like, I hope, I hope it turns out that <laughs> whatever my next bag is going to be, I already have a twilly for it, you know? And like, I loved this pattern. I really love this piece. This is also from Valentine's Day last year. I don't really change out my twillies. I don't wear silk scarves that much. So that's why I think the silk pieces are not exactly the best purchase item for me. I know some people have like whole collections and they love like getting different twillies and dressing up their bags with different twillies and all of that. And I think that's super, I really do. I just am not a huge twilly decorating person. I realized having said that I do have a twilly on my Picotin 18 and I have twillies on my Birkin, but it's more like once I have them set on there, like I don't really change it up. So that's why I, I just think in general for me, Hermes silks, like silk scarves, silk twillies, little silk pieces aren't exactly like the most necessary purchase for me. And the last piece I want to mention is actually a part of Hermes costume jewelry, and it is their Click H bracelets. The Click Clack H I think are the thinner ones, and then this is a Click H because it's the thicker version. I picked this up during the Hermes sale in New York City in 2019, and I was fortunate enough to be able to do that, and I picked it up actually for half off of retail, which, I think is an appropriate price <laughs> and a great price for this particular piece. I used to have a click clack H, the thinner version. 
in the GM size, it was black enamel and gold hardware. I ended up selling that because I initially bought it to wear with the watch that I was wearing on a daily basis at that time. So that's why I got the GM size. And then I stopped wearing that watch and then the, the style itself was a little too big. So eventually I sold that because I didn't feel like I was getting enough wear out of it. When I went to the sale and I saw that these were half off, that's when I decided I thought it was a great opportunity to pick up this thicker size. And I think this thicker size is better for me personally to wear as like a standalone bracelet. Like if you, if you wanted to stack like five of them, then I think the thinner one is better. But as a like a its own piece or you have like maybe one or two other like dainty items with it, I think this is an excellent uh, size like width. Like if I think about how much these are, I really don't think they're worth it. Um, and I feel like this is such a piece that personally I went through phases of wanting wearing and then I stopped wearing it. So I feel like it's one of those that doesn't quite have the longevity that you might want, that you might seek in a piece that you spend this much money on. I know it's a popular piece from Hermes, and I know a lot of people like to wear them. I don't want it to come off as like it's played out and like you're really basic if you get one. Like I, I, that's not what I mean at all. What I mean is like it, it's, a, it's a piece that I think is difficult to sustain long-term excitement over. Like for example, my Rand sandals, I've worn them consistently for five years now. It's also an iconic Hermes piece. It could be a little bit played out. A lot of people might have them, but like that doesn't bother me. You know what I mean? Like I'm just like gung ho, like I'm going to wear my <laughs> Oran sandals every summer. Um, I'm trying to think of other examples. Like a lot of my other, let's say Chanel handbags that I have, like I, yeah, sometimes I might go into a period where I don't reach for it as much, but I don't think it's, it's a bit different, like, but, but I'll still come back to it and I'll still want to wear it and I'll still know that it's in my closet and not be like, oh, I have that, I should wear it. It's more like, oh yeah, like I, I know I have that piece and when I wear an outfit where I need it, like I'll, I'll, I'll use that, you know? This one, I kind of go, oh, like it's in my closet. I feel like I should wear it. I'm not really wearing it. I hope that makes sense. I'm, I hope that makes sense. I'm, I, I don't feel like I did a great job <laughs> explaining that. Uh, but that's why I wanted to include it in my worst purchases. Like personally, for me, I, I think given that I sold one already and this is the second one and I feel kind of like, oh, like I should use it and I kind of have to make myself wear it. I think this is not a good purchase for me and my current collection. So that is my best and worst from my current Hermes collection. Uh, let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. What are some of your best pieces from Hermes? Like what are some things that you, you cannot imagine living your life without? And then what are some of your worst pieces? Like maybe the Rand sandals just did not work for you and you feel like that's not worth it. Or maybe, maybe a click bracelet is like one of the best pieces that you have from Hermes. Like definitely let me know. I'd love to hear your thoughts. I hope you enjoyed. If you have any questions or comments on any of those pieces, feel free to leave them down below or head on over to Instagram and I'd be happy to help however I can. If you like this video and you found it helpful, please give me a thumbs up. I really appreciate all of your feedback and support. If you like this kind of content and you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel. I post new fashion related videos every Sunday and Wednesday. So until next time,